Mind maps are a fantastic tool to structure your thinking and put it into a tangible form. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to create beautiful professional mind maps in Miro very quickly by leveraging all of the cool features Miro has to offer. And we're going to start with the coolest one. So let's jump into the board and create a mind map. To create a mind map, we have to look on the left side here in the toolbar and often the mind map is already in here. If not, you can search for mind map here when you click on more apps and then you can pin it or unpin it into a toolbar depending if you use it often or only occasionally. Then if you have it inside here, the preferred way that I create mind maps is not clicking on it and then selecting one of these templates because yeah, I don't need them, I know how to create mind maps and shortly you will also know it. So the way I prefer to do it is just simply clicking on that icon and simply dragging out a starting note. And I'm having that one in here right now. Basically, I can put in a topic or idea for the mind map and I'm going to do that. So let's say planning a company retreat. Oh, we missed a letter there. Here we go. So this is the starting note. And from here, I want to show you the coolest stuff that Miro has to offer in terms of mind maps, in my opinion. And that is to basically expand and generate mind maps with AI. I think that's super helpful because then you can work with the AI as a companion to build out your mind map and gather ideas. How does it work? So I have the starting node here selected, and then you see this sparkling blue little icon here which says me assist click on it and then i can click on generate mind map it will take the topic now it will put it into the ai and then spin up a relevant child notes for my mind map so let's click keep here and take a look what the ai generated so as you can see it generated basically topics for me to consider when planning a company retreat and all of those are super relevant the location budget agenda meals are all things that i could think about and it gives me a great starting point to work from i can also now go further let's say for example here we have team building activities in the agenda what I can do also now is I can click on this note here, click the button again, and then click on expand with ideas. Now again, it will think what team building activities it can generate. And as you can see, it generated a ton. <laughs> so you see a lot of details in here, which I could work with, but because this is a fictional example, I'm going to click this card. But I think if you play around with this, you will find this to be super, super valuable. The next thing that we can take a look at is how you can style mind maps. I think that's really important because you want to, especially if you have a large mind map, you want to still have it looking organized and easy to understand. So I'm going to click on the starting note here and you see the context menu popping up. Let's go from left to right. The first thing that you can do here is change the note type between a lightly rounded one, a square and the pill one. I like the pill one the most. Then you can change the theme. So currently we have it left to right, but we can also go from uh, top to bottom. I think it doesn't look really organized and is a little bit harder to understand. So I'm going to switch back. And then we also can change the uh, connection lines between rounded ones and angled ones. And actually, I really like the angled ones. I think if you look at this one here, I think it's really easy to understand and it's a little bit easier on the eye than the round ones. Then going further, we can have auto layout on and off. As you can see here, it didn't change anything. So now it's off, so I can move the nodes around freely. If I put it on, it would snap them back. I think auto layout is really helpful, especially if you have a large mind map, because also take a look if I'm going to select a node and I just put it below another node, they will switch positions. So it allows me to really easily organize my mind map and I tend to use it and uh, keep it on on. If you are going to put it off, maybe what's helpful for you is that if you want to still basically one click organize your mind map, you can click here on more and then click on a layout notes and this will organize everything again. Then here on the right side, we have the note style. Here I can randomize basically all of the colors that I use for this mind map or I can give it one color. I like the randomized one because then I can more easily separate the different child notes from each other. But what I like to do to kind of style it in a way that I think it works better for my mind maps 
is to fill the opacity for the starting node. And then I'm going to select all of the secondary child nodes and I'm going to give them the node style of a slightly rounded a rectangle. I'm going to do it here and then we can take a look and zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, I think this looks better, but it also more easily shows what the hierarchy is because the starting node is where everything starts. Then we have these kind of rounded boxes here that are colored and then we have the uh, single kind of ideas inside there. I think it's, it's more organized this way. And then there are a couple of other settings that you are used to from Miro. For example, the text style, uh, adding a link, the text color and so on. So nothing more special inside here. Let's talk about a couple of specific things that you can do with the mind map. First of all, you can collapse and expand the different nodes. For example, here I have the agenda node. And if I click here on the minus, it will collapse the entire collection of child nodes and I can see also how many are inside here. I can of course do the same with all of the other ones. I think this is really helpful especially for a large mind map. The other thing that I can do is that I can also connect nodes with each other. In order to do that I can just select a node and then you see a slight blue icon here and if you hover over it the cursor also changes then I can select it and I can drag out a connection line. And here, for example, what I could do is I can also give it an arrow and add a text, for example, budget restricts the agenda. I think that's really helpful. By the way, also uh, now that I saw the dashed line, you can of course also have a dashed line for the node styling. So I didn't show you that one, but uh, you can use a dashed one here as well, which might be helpful if you want to indicate like a less strong connection between like a parent node and a child node. And there are also a couple of shortcuts that you can use to work much faster with the mind maps. <laughs> Let me show you those. First of all, kind of a navigational one. If you select a mind map, for example, I have agenda selected here, I can simply use the arrow keys to jump between different parts of the mind map. And I think a great use case for that is if you, for example, are sharing your screen in an online meeting and you want to show your colleagues your mind map, then you can just select a node and then you use the keys to kind of move around a little bit faster and it will always follow your view and I think this is a really cool and easy way and you can just concentrate on presenting your presentation without worrying about the navigation. And there are two other shortcuts which are super helpful to work faster and the first one is how to quickly create a child node. So here for example I have the agenda. Let's say I want to add guest speakers uh, or speakers as consideration for the agenda. Then I'm going to click into the agenda and you see the blinking cursor here. And then I can simply press tap on my keyboard and it creates a child node. For example, here I can do speakers. I can press tap again. And now let's move a little bit to the side. I can add speakers. For example, how about Elon Musk? To now add somebody else below, we need to add a sibling a node. In order to do that, instead of pressing tap, we can press enter. And that will create basically a node on the same layer. So how about another prominent speaker? Maybe Daniel Wirtz, I think is a good guy. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, but who doesn't like to invite themselves to a company retreat. And yeah, but these two shortcuts are super helpful. And a third thing that you can do is that you can also, if you are in a node, if you hold shift and press enter, you can also jump to the next line instead of creating a new sibling node. So here, for example, I can add CEO of Tesla. And then of course I can style also the nodes. For example, I can make this one a little bit bigger and this one smaller. So this becomes kind of the subtitle. Then you can also quickly move around nodes within the mind map. So here I have budget and transportation and up here I have also uh, things about the venue. And let's say I want to bring transportation to the venue as a child node. Then I can select transportation as a node and just simply drag it and then drop it on venue. And yes, as you can see, it pops into here as a child node. You can of course also select multiple ones and we could also move all of them to accessibility if we want to. 
So I think this mind map is looking really great. I don't know what you're thinking, but I think now it's time to maybe export this and send this to some people. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So the first option here, of course, is that we can just share the Miro board with people. But one tip I can give you here is that if your Miro board is a little bit bigger and you want to specifically share the mind map on the Miro board, what you can do is you can select the mind map then click on the three dots and then click on create frame. So now we have a frame around it. And when we select the frame, click on the three dots again, we can click on copy link. Now, if you send somebody the link, I can uh, show how this works here as well. So let's create a text icon. Let's say you send somebody this link to an email. If they click on it, it will open the mirror board and bring them exactly to this view here. So I think this is a good way to share the mirror specific link and bring them right to your mind map. The next thing that you can do is you can copy the whole mind map as an image. So let's remove the frame here again. Just select the whole mind map, then click on the three dots and click copy as image. Now the entire mind map is in my clipboard and I can paste it into an email or a team chat to quickly share it with somebody and the quality is reasonable. If you want to share it in higher quality, you can also again create a frame around it like this here and then you can click export and then click save as PDF. And this saves as a PDF and then it's vectorized so somebody can really like zoom in and it will always stay in the same quality. If you plan on working with the data that you have in your mind map, a great app that you can use for that is an app called Mind Map Downloader. You can see it in here, so just search for it in the apps. And if I'm going to open it, you see that I can just simply select the mind map. It sees that the mind map is selected. I can click Load Export and then click Export CSV. And you don't see that right here, but it just dropped this mind map into my download folder. And from here on, I can import it into Excel, for example, to further work with the data. Of course, the reverse is also possible. You just simply click here on Import and then you can select a CSV and then you can bring it into your mirror board and import the whole CSV as a mind map. So I think that's everything I had to say about mind maps. If I forgot something, please put it in the comments below as a question. I'm happy to answer it there. And then also, if you liked it, stick around, follow the facilitator school account here, and then you are in the loop because we're probably uploading more mirror tutorials in the future.